Hello everyone, as you know, I am Paul, your eHobby guy, and in today's video, we're going to look at this wireless switch. It's a wireless relay with one Form C contact. It comes with this container here. It does need some cutout to be used. It can be configured to be either momentary or on off. We're going to break it down, look at it inside out. We're going to wire it to some high voltage and do a long range test. So without further delay, let's jump right in. Okay, so this is exactly how it was when I pulled it out of the packet. And yeah, it's just kind of jammed into the container here. The width feels okay on this, but the length, it's tight. It's too big on the length. And there are some tabs down there, here and here, and here and here. So this board is supposed to go down and snap under those tabs, but it's too big. The fitment here doesn't seem that good, but I think we can fix that fairly easily. Maybe just sand a little, it's almost there. I think we'll be okay. As usual, we'll take a look at the general workmanship. Let's get in close here. It doesn't look too bad here. You can see like it really needed to be cleaned up here. Uh, all over here, it looks like some flux sediment. It's not good really, especially when you have some high voltage coming on here. Also, this board here is crooked. It looks like it's just resting on this chip here. It doesn't matter. It's really just aesthetic. It's one of the things I do look out for. Otherwise, everything looks okay with this. We have the antenna here, of course. The jumper, which we'll get to in a second. And there is a push button here momentary push button we do have markings for the positive and the negative here plus and minus which is good common normally closed and normally open for these three terminals here i think we can move on to the next step now we'll take a look at the remote it's a single button remote and you can see the red led there it comes on when the button is pressed and it's transmitting i think we can take a look inside here let me grab my spudger and let's see what we have we can get in here there we go. Hey, that came off nice and easily. All right, we just had a rubber membrane there for the button and a single board here. Here's the button. There we go. And turning it over, of course, there's the crystal oscillator. But here for the batteries, yes, there's two batteries here. They're very thin. This battery is a CR2016. Now, just a quick note about that. The 2016 stands for uh, 20 millimeters in diameter. The 16 is 1.6 millimeters in thickness. And there's two of them. Now, a very, very common button battery like this is a 2032. Now, a CR2032 is 3.2 millimeters in thickness, which would be the exact thickness of these. And I asked myself quickly, why didn't we have a CR2032? And the answer, of course, is this is a 3-volt battery. And so when you're putting them in series like this, you, we're getting 6 volts from the two batteries. The 2032 would only be 3. So obviously we need 6 volts, or at least it was designed around uh, having 6 volts. And that's it. I do like the cool low profile form factor here, it's nice. One other important thing before we move on is the case that it came with here. If you look at the terminals here, you have three terminals here. They don't match up, they don't line up with anything here. And if I turn it around, it doesn't line up pretty bad here. And you might say, well, maybe I have it the wrong way around. Well, if we turn it around this way, it's even worse. So no matter what, we want to use this uh, case that it came with. We're going to have to do some cutting out, which is okay. I do like the very tiny size that it came in. And so with the understanding that we want to use this, we're, we're going to have to do some cutting out to account for the wires entering in and exiting. And of course, the antenna exiting the box. Now, I just want to show you one thing that's comparable to it that I bought many years ago. Here is something I bought about 20 years ago in Radio Shack when, when Radio Shack still existed here in the U.S. This is a 120 volt and the reason I bought it is because in my den I have a 5.1 surround sound and the subwoofer, the, the point one, is behind my couch and behind a table and it's very difficult to get back press the on off button i can't reach it and so what i did is i bought this i think it was either 30 or 40 dollars and i plugged this in and i plugged the subwoofer and i left the power button on i'm able to switch the subwoofer 
on and off by keeping this right next to my couch, right on my end table, and I just turn it on and turn it off when I'm finished instead of having to reach to a very difficult location. And so this would be a very similar situation. This is a 12 volt though, this is 120 volt. This needs 12 volt for power, but it can run both low voltage and high voltage application. It really it provides isolation from the input 12 volt voltage and the output contacts here. So you can see clearly that it's a 12 volt relay. The contacts are rated 10 amps at up to 250 volts AC and up to 30 volts DC. So I know that these contacts, this form C contact, form C meaning common, normally open and normally closed, can handle up to 250 volts and 10 amps. Turning it over here, I do want to point out that you can jump the 12 volts around to the common which would make this essentially a wet contact and not dry. It's isolated now, so it's a dry contact. And I just want to point out something, a flaw perhaps. You can see the slot that's cut here and here. That slot is there to isolate the low voltage from any high voltage that you might be using on these contacts right here. So let's say we did run a 120 volt, uh, which is what we'd use mains voltage here in the US. We put one leg of a 120 volt in here. Potentially when it's triggered is now 120 volt here. We put a slot here to isolate the 120 volts from over here. And this is attached to this post here. So there's a slot here. However, the leg of the 120 volt makes all of this live here and so we're very close here with 120 volt on this pin and our low voltage 12 volt here and so there is a flaw in the sense that we provide isolation here with slots we really should have a slot here also to strengthen the design and isolate it further from the low voltage positive 12 volt right here now that's a nice segue because it is so close here you can very easily bridge this and this this contact to here with a little piece of wire or just a big lump of solder and you would make the 12 volt positive come all the way here and make it a wet contact. By doing that, you wouldn't have to bring a wire jumping it around externally to the common this way. Okay, I have 12 volts turned on. So let's see what happens. We got 12 volts. Yes, it's it's operating right now. Let me move the antenna back. So when I press, the red light comes while it's transmitting. I release, it switches back. So I can feel that it's in momentary. But it's easy enough to test that. Holding down, it is tripped. When I release, I can feel the relay click again. Let's put my meter on that. And I'll put the buzzer on. So I'll go to the common. That's the common normally closed, that's the common and the normally opened. So, I'm going to press, and you can hear the buzzer, goes down to 1.5432, the resistance is dropping, stopped at 0.8, and when I release, it goes back to open, close, open. And so we're looking obviously at a momentary operation here close open. You can switch the mode to being toggle. Let's take a look at that right now. This is the jumper that was falling off. Very, It's very, very loose. You see how easy it was to come off there? There are the three pins. So when it's on the outermost two pins, it's in the momentary configuration. Um, but we can get it into toggle by moving it over. It's so loose, it would have to be tightened up. There we go. Now it's in the toggle. You can see it's on the inner two most pins. So let's try and get our button here and see if we can get it into toggle. So I'm going to press and release. Yes, and it's staying on. I'm going to press again. Yeah, so now we're in on off. On off. And so this jumper right here in this corner switches it from toggle to being momentary. Now we're going to look at the under part of the board. I just want to point out something to you. So here's the underside right under the header pins here to set the momentary and toggle option. If you look here, there's a T for toggle and an M for momentary. There are two solder pads here and two here. Out of the box, this is how it's set to be momentary out of the box. Two solder pads are bridged right here. Now if we wanted to, we could just remove the bridge there and put the bridge here and it would be toggle. But putting the header pins on this side just gave us the option to move the jumper 
and do it more conveniently if, if we wanted to change the mode of the switch more than once. But if it was permanently set, you could just remove this header completely and just put the solder bridge either here for momentary or here for toggle. Okay, enough scrutiny for now. I think we should hook something up to this. I think we'll go with high voltage. I think I have a 120 volt light that we can turn on and off. Here I do have a light bulb. This is an LED bulb. We could splice one leg through like this and put the other leg right on the contact here and plug it in and see what we get. Okay, here's a word of warning. Again, as always, this is 120 volt mains voltage. It's not plugged in now, but as soon as it gets plugged in, very dangerous. Be extremely careful. Yes, we're in the toggle mode, still not plugged in, and I'm going to go get this. This thing plugged in right now, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, we are plugged in and live, so we need to take extreme care around here. Let's see what we get here. We're set into toggle mode. Yes, light on, light off, in toggle mode. Let me turn the light off here. There we go light on light off so it does work obviously 120 volt AC going through the normally open contact toggle on toggle off I think I'll get this into this box we'll cut out some of the end here we'll do a range test I think I'll push it all the way in that's it seated all the way in a rough measurement of the antenna length is about nine inches it's a little more because there's some going onto the board or in millimeters yeah, about 23 centimeters 230 millimeters there it is fully contained in its housing we'll get it wired back up with this light and uh, we'll give it a range test okay here i am outside i got a 12 volt transformer down there powering this get this antenna straight up like this I've got my switch still wired in, and I'm just going to start walking backwards just to test up close, so I should be able to see it. I'm going to start walking and measure the distance. Okay, I'm back. It's a staggering 162 meters. So approximately 500 feet, the range on this, with this antenna standing up like this, absolutely blew my mind. Much better than other long range tests that I had done in other videos. Let's get it wrapped up and back inside. Okay, we're back inside. Did a quick conversion, 162 meters is approximately 530 feet which was really uh, went way beyond my expectations I did see in one of the listings a hundred meter range this is one you know 162 with direct line of sight absolutely excellent this was just over four dollars to buy I should mention also at this time these do come in two channel and four channel versions with uh, much more buttons up to four buttons on the remote and you can have the remote do both on and off with some buttons and momentary without changing configuration but there's variations out there I recommend you know if you're interested go check them out you saw you know how thorough this review of this was certainly anywhere in my house I can control this with a button with the obstacles the walls the stone floors and stuff like that no problem at all communicating with this so with that said thank you for taking the time to watch this video remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell subscriptions don't mean too much more these days but if you hit that notification bell you will be notified of when a new video comes out i am on social media so follow me there check out my youtube channel for other videos thanks for watching again i'll see you next time